Hey y'all, easily the most popular request I've been getting lately is how to draw the vectors for the 50 star union on a U.S. flag. Now, U.S. flags are very hot right now. and You only have to do a simple Google search for a V-carved U.S. flag to see what I'm talking about. There are a multitude of models, there are a multitude of files, and there are a multitude of ways people are creating U.S. flags. Also, every nation has its own flag, a preferred way of displaying that flag, and the flag has its own proportions, its own colors, its own arrangement. And this is true of the Australian flag, the UK Union flag, the Canadian flag, any nation you choose. There are going to be certain proportions, certain ratios, certain patterns and designs. So a simple Google search will help you to find those proportions, lay out the pattern, and get the correct measurements to make your flag a correct representation of that flag. The U.S. flag, as it turns out, even though it's a simple design, it's one of the more complex patterns, and it all comes down to that 50-star union, which can be a little difficult to figure out. Now, fortunately, there are people far more intelligent than I that have come up with calculators, web-based, that are free, that will help you to figure out all of these dimensions if you have one known dimension. Now, the calculator I'm using for this demonstration is the Omni Calculator. I'll put a link to it down in the description box of this video. You only need to know one dimension. If you know the length of the flag you want to create, then that's the dimension you know. You will come down here to the appropriate blank, click, and enter that dimension. For this demonstration, we're going to focus on this 50-star union. And that's all we're going to do. I'm not going to demonstrate the stripes or anything else. My intention with this video is to reinforce the use of linear arrays both in X and in Y and to reinforce taking dimensions for uh, any type of a project found online and applying those dimensions within Aspire VCarve Cut 2D. So, the dimension that I know that I want to use for this union is C, here. Now, on this calculator, they're calling it the union width. That is my height in Y in Aspire. And I know that dimension I want to be 10.5 inches tall. So I'll enter 10.5, and you can see the calculator fills out all the other dimensions. Now the dimensions that are important to us right now are the union width, length, the star gaps in width, the star gaps in length, and the star diameters. To set up our file to create a new file, I'm going to need to know the union width and the union length. And I want to add an inch to these two dimensions so I have room to clamp down or fasten my material to the CNC table. So I can remember 10.5. I probably won't remember the union length D, which is our width in X. So I'll select that measurement, highlight it, right click, and copy it. Now I'll come down to Aspire and I'll come down here and I'll create a new file. 
our width in X is the width that I said I probably wouldn't remember. So I've got that value selected. I'll hit backspace to delete it. Then I'll hold down the control key on my keyboard and tap the letter V to paste. My height in Y is 10.5 inches. This is the size of the union I want to carve. Now I need to add my inch to these two measurements so I have room to mount the material. So I'll change that to a 5 and I'll change this to a 1. This is a single sided job. My material thickness is 3 quarters of an inch. My Z0 position is to the material surface. And for layout purposes, my XY datum is in the center. I'm not doing any 3D modeling, so my modeling resolution is irrelevant. I don't need to worry about this at all. And I'll click OK. Now we want to create the profile of our union. So I'll come over here and I'll draw a rectangle. I want to anchor that rectangle by the center of the rectangle, and I want it centered on my x0, y0. I want square corners, and I want my width. Again, I'll highlight whatever value's in there, backspace to get rid of it, hold down control, and tap the letter V. I remember my height in Y is 10 and a half inches, and this is already set for that because I've done this before. Now I'll create that rectangle, and this is the outline of the 50 star union that we're going to create. Now I can go ahead and close it. Now if we take a look at our stars here, it's very difficult to see in this image, and I can't really zoom in on it, but the arms of the stars that stick out to the side go straight across. There is no bend upwards or inwards, downwards. So I need to remember that. It is a five-pointed star. That's easy to remember. The star diameter is what we need to know right now. And that diameter is 1.201 inches. So I'll go ahead and I'll highlight that number and copy it. Come back down to Aspire. And I'll go into my Draw a Star tool. The number of points on my star is 5. I'm going to create one star here in the center, and then I can move it and then create my array. So I want it centered on my x0, y0. The outer radius of the star is going to be approximately one half of this star diameter on this calculator. So I need to remember we've got diameter here and we're talking about radius here. Now it's not going to be precise but we can get very close. So I'll just select that, hit backspace to clear that field, Hold down the control key and once again tap the letter V. And that places that measurement here. Now again, I need half of this measurement because I'm working with the radius. So I'll come over to my number pad and hit divided by 2 and then tap the equals button on my keyboard to divide that measurement in half. And there is the radius of the star we're going to draw. Down here for the inner radius percentage, again, we want the arms of that star to go straight across. We don't want them to bend downwards or bend upwards. And based on experience, I know that an inner radius percentage of 38.3 will give me those straight arms. 
I'll click create and then I can close this and that creates our first star. Now a minute ago I said that using that star radius is going to get us close. There are several ways of measuring the diameter and the radius of a star. Are you going from the tip to this point? Are you going from the tip at the top to one of these bottom points? There are a couple of different ways of measuring them. So we want an overall size, and we have already copied that overall size into a clipboard on the computer. So I'll select this and we'll go over into set selected object size just to check. And we don't have the correct radius here, the correct diameter rather. I'm going to select the largest of these two measurements, which happens to be the width in X, and that'll give me the diameter from this point to this point. I'll select this value. Again, tap backspace to delete everything in that field. Hold down control. Tap the letter V. And that enters that dimension up here in the width. The height is a little bit different, but that's okay. What I should have done before I did anything up here was make sure that I had link XY checked. Fortunately for me, it was. I'll click apply and that resized our star. Now it is the proper size. So I know that was a long way to go to get there. Now I just want to go ahead and select my star, go into move and transform mode, bring it up here. I'm not placing it anywhere in particular just yet because now I need to copy this, make an array copy. The 50 star union on a US flag is made up of four rows of five stars and five rows of six stars. So I'm going to go ahead and create a six star array up here. Then we can place it. So with this star selected, I'll come down here to create a linear array copy. And I want to copy this star this way in X. I want six stars. So the object size I'm not going to touch. I want one row in Y this direction. And I want six columns in X. I want there to be six stars. I'm going to use a gap because that's the measurement I have here. Go back to my calculator and that gap here in F, that gap is 1.2284. So I'll copy, come back down to Aspire. And I'm going to highlight whatever value is there in my X blank here. Because we are copying in the X direction. Hold down the control key. Tap the letter V. I'm not going to group these just yet. Now I'll click on copy. And I have my six stars. All spaced accurately apart. Now I can close this. And I know that this gap here is correct. And it's going to be correct for a five star array. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this one. Select all six of those stars. Select them again to go into move and transform mode. I'll back out just a little bit to have some room. And I'll go up here to the center. And before I touch my mouse button, I'll hold down the control key and then click on that center square and drag a copy straight up. So I have another 
array of six stars here. Well, I only want five in this array, so I'll just take this last star here, select it, and tap delete on my keyboard. I now have one row of six and one row of five. Now I can start arranging and array copying these stars. So I'll select all of these first and let's go ahead and align it horizontally with the material. That gives me the correct horizontal space here. Now I want to create five rows of these six stars. Again, I'll use my linear array. This time, I want five rows in Y and one column in X. I don't want to create more groups of six over this way in X. I want to create five columns in Y. How far I want to move that, I need to go back to my calculator. And my star gap width, E, is this spacing right here. And that is 1.053. So I'll copy this dimension, come back down to Aspire. Now I have my stars up here towards the top of my union. I want this array to run downhill this way in Y. So I will highlight my value here in X and hit zero and set that to zero. I don't want any kind of a gap in X because I'm not making any more columns. I want my gaps to be in Y, but I want them to run downhill. So that's going to be a negative number. Remember, running downhill in Y is negative, uphill in Y is positive. So I have my negative symbol there. Now I can hold down Control, tap V, and there is my gap, and click Copy. There are five rows of six. Close that. Now to get my correct gap spacing and place this exactly where it's supposed to go, I'll just simply tap the F9 key on my keyboard. I now have the correct gap between the top of this star and my profile outline. And my gap here from this point to the profile is correct. The gap here is correct. And the gap here is correct. Now let's go ahead and select these stars. We'll place this first row. Then we'll make our array copies of these stars. So we have those selected. Put them into move and transform mode. Put my cursor over the center of the center star here where the square is. And I'll move it down in this direction here. I'm just kind of placing it there and letting go so that I can zoom in. And now is when we want to make sure we have smart snapping and geometry snapping turned on. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab hold of this center square, click the left mouse button, bring it up to this point, then bring it down to this point, then bring it back over to the center, and you see how it snapped into position. It is just placed, it is just spaced this row of stars equally between this point and this point. So I know that this row of stars is now centered. Now we'll just do another simple array copy. Again, in the minus y direction. I want four rows of five. I want another one here, here, and here for a total of four. So we'll come back over to Array Copy with them selected. The only thing that's going to change from the last Array Copy we made is the number. I want four rows of five. I want the spacing to be the same. 
I'm not doing any columns in X. I'll just click Copy. Close that. And there's our 50 star union. Now I can select all of these stars, group them, and we now have a 50 star union for a U.S. flag. Now that was a lot of steps, and I know that. And it was a lot of going back and forth from that website calculator into Aspire. But these are the steps that I have found that are easiest, whether you are copying dimensions from a calculator online or you have found a drawing or a blueprint that you can't seem to trace vectors from. By simply finding the dimensions and using those dimensions to your advantage, you can then draw the vectors. Then when you have these vectors in place, save your project and scale them to any size that you may need to scale them to. Once I have this drawn, I can now come up and save as a template and I can enter 10.5 tall union save that and the next time I need to use this template it's there ready to go if I need to create a larger union, union, I can scale everything up by selecting it and adjusting the size to whatever size I need. And I don't have to go through all of this effort in drawing it out again. So let's see what it looks like when we v-carve it. We'll come over here into our toolpath tab. I have my stars selected. And this is just my personal preference. When I'm carving something of this size, I'm going to use a 90 degree V bit. I am not going to cut to a flat depth. I'm just going to let the program decide how deep it needs to cut these stars with a 90 degree V bit. I'm also not going to use clearance tool. Let's let the V bit take care of everything here. I, I've seen in the past where people have used clearance tools in the center of these stars, and it looks like somebody drilled a hole in the middle of it, then came along and carved the arms of the star. So I'm not a big fan of that. I'll just let it cut to the depth it needs to cut to carve these stars out. We'll see how that looks. So we are not going to use a clearance tool. I'm just going to call this vCarve stars and we'll calculate the toolpath. I will go ahead and set the toolpath color to black so you can see it. Obviously we know the stars are white but for the purposes of this demonstration I'll make them black so that we have some good contrast and you can see them. And we'll go ahead and preview that selected toolpath. And there we have a 50 star union. Nice and smooth inside. I don't have any weird holes here looking like it's drilled down into the material. And I don't have a tool change as far as the V carved toolpath is concerned. Close my preview. Come back over to my 2D view. Select my profile. Uh, this looks correct. My cut depth. My tool. It's a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to carve to the outside of the vector. Uh, I will do a separate last pass of point 0.1. I should add tabs to this tool path, but for purposes of this demonstration, I won't. Just so you can see it without the tabs. And I will ramp in a distance of an inch and a half. I want to make sure I have sharp external corners. 
and we'll call this profile cutout calculate it and we'll preview that toolpath double click to get rid of the waste and there is our 50 star union for a US flag so now you see how simple it is to take a complex pattern such as this and by calculating the correct sizes and the correct gaps from an online calculator create one array of six stars make a copy of that array of six stars delete one to get an array of five stars with the same spacing in between then create another linear array in y to create our five rows of six place this row then create our four rows of five in between by breaking a complex pattern down to its individual constituent components you can take something that's actually pretty complex and turn it into something simple so I hope you got something out of this video if you did I do hope you'll give it a thumbs up just as a reminder this afternoon at noon Pacific 3 p.m. Eastern I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we can discuss anything I've talked about or demonstrated in this video or any other questions you may have. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now these live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you click that red subscribe button, click that little notification bell right next to it. Then click it again and set that menu to all notifications. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. And y'all take care.